Ian Shepherdson, help us out here with the ambiguity about strong and weak dollar. It's a lot of ambiguous moving parts going on here. Which does President Trump want, a strong or a weak dollar? Yeah, I can't, it seems to depend which day it is, doesn't it, and who's been bending yeah. his ear most recently. Yeah, this is a real problem. I mean, the mantra has always been from the U.S. that a strong dollar is good for America. Everyone understood that. It was straightforward. It was clear. Uh, and we all knew where we stood. And now, of course, we have this sort of protectionism uh, play going on in the new administration. It's not clear who's leading on, on the dollar in the new administration either. So there's a, a range of competing views, though, and it's not clear which one has the president's attention. Uh, the, the, the key focus so far has been with, uh, with Germany. But when I look at the history of dollar-euro, it doesn't scream out to me that, we, yeah. that there's a significant problem from the U.S. perspective. And actually, right now, U.S. manufacturing uh, export orders seem to be doing quite well. So I'm kind of wondering, you know, what's the focus of this problem? Do they really want a substantially weaker dollar? Well, that would be such a gigantic change in right. policy. It's kind of hard to imagine it would come out overnight in a tweet. At least, I hope not. Well, we'll see how that goes. Let me bring up the chart here, Francine. Pick up the conversation quickly, just because of time. Here's a dollar index with a move, big move up. I don't know, Francine, maybe we're near where we need a Claridge Accord, where you and I go to Claridge's hotel, why the world solves okay. a strong dollar. All right, right. And maybe we bring President Trump with us and, and talk dollar dynamics. This is a serious point, though, Paul. Who advises the president on these matters? And actually, if, if he doesn't know yet uh, dollar dynamics, that's perfectly excusable, as long as he listens to people within his administration that actually know. If it's true that he calls a national um, you know, security person, that's probably not the, the best point of call. No, that's always very bizarre, but so many things have been bizarre with this man, so that nothing surprises me anymore. Um, but, yeah, when you look at the dollar dynamics, uh, especially for, for the future, uh, the uncertainty is so great, but it, it seems to me that, if anything, the dollar is more likely to strengthen in, in the medium run um, because of divergence, right? I mean, the divergence both in monetary policy well, the, the Fed is more likely to be restrictive than the ECB is going to be. And on fiscal policies, we have something similar. Although we still don't know the detail, but it's more likely that there is going to be a fiscal boom in the U.S. than, than in Europe. And these two together then leads me to conclude that um, it's more likely that the dollar will continue to strengthen. But again... I've stopped making hard predictions because it's too tough. Ian, what about your prediction about relations between Germany and the U.S.? So we've seen this kind of souring or, you know, war of words between Peter Navarro and now uh, Mr. Weidman saying it's not true, they're not cheating the U.S. because they have a surplus and because uh, the euro is weaker than dollar. Where does this end? Is it just noise? I think probably it is just noise, uh, uh, not least because we haven't heard anything yet from the new Treasury Secretary, from Steve Mnuchin, whose views on this are kind of obscure at the moment. So I think this is just sort of rock throwing now rather than a, a, some sort of sustained new fundamental uh, paradigm shift in, in the way the U.S. views the dollar. And I agree with Paul, the dollar is more likely to rise and fall, especially if the border tax adjustment, which the House Republicans have proposed, if that is actually implemented, even in a, a small way, that's going to be a, a dollar push, plus higher interest rates, plus easier fiscal policy. So if you've got all those dynamics pushing the dollar up, then maybe it makes sense to be shouting about not wanting a stronger dollar in the hope that you will limit the upside. Yeah. But you're not going to be able to stop that upside, given those the well. fundamentals, because the market trades the fundamentals ultimately.